Welcome. I'm Linda Dara, and I'm a clinical professor of entrepreneurial practice, as well as the Larry Levy Executive Director for the Kellogg Innovation and Entrepreneurship Initiative. Outside of Kellogg, I'm a long-standing board member of 1871, which is the tech hub of Chicago, as well as I'm a co-founder and on the investment committee of Impact Engine, a seed fund for social ventures. And at Kellogg, I've been here now for over six years and really have helped with the team to recreate, redesign the entrepreneurial curriculum and co-curricular activities at Kellogg. And I'll be talking a lot about that today. But helping me and giving me the student perspective is Chase Michalek. Yeah. Chase, tell Thanks us so a little bit about you. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Chase Michalek. I was a 1Y here at Kellogg just uh, this past spring. I graduated. Um, I run now a company called Hilltop Health. I homegrown and built here at Kellogg. Uh, we're a uh, modern veterinary services platform that partners with veterinarians to open and manage and own vet clinics in major U.S. cities. It's a really, really cool company, really great experience, um, and it kind of tailors or parlays nicely into my background, which is in, um, in investment banking, and then I went into healthcare private equity. And so um, Kellogg was a, a fantastic experience, albeit short, in, in the 1Y program, uh, but it was fantastic in the sense that I came in with a a business idea that I had, I had kind of developed at my previous job and really had access to the resources and the staff um, to really get the business kind of de-risked, built, and then ultimately launched by the time I graduated. So happy to talk more about it and answer any questions later down the road, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, um, but uh, again, just here to be any sort of uh, resource I can be to any of you guys that are evaluating coming to this great school. So thank you again and for joining us today. Um, We've seen a lot of the information that um, already in advance of what you're looking um, to know today, and we're going to try and answer many of your questions. And the exciting thing is many of you are already submitting applications, so congratulations that you're already in process. Um, so one of the questions that many of you ask is, why is a Kellogg entrepreneurship experience different than other MBA schools? It's a great question. And I think it really comes down in how we redesign entrepreneurship at Kellogg seven years ago. Um, and many of the MBA schools that I look at now, they look as entrepreneurship as an independent unit. I see entrepreneurship in a separate department. And, and what's happening also is I'm seeing entrepreneurships being put in a separate building that's actually away from the rest of the MBA curricular and, and the programming. At Kellogg, we believe that entrepreneurship is really a general management business degree. Mm -hmm. You really, if you wanna launch and grow a successful venture, you're gonna have to know a little bit about finance, strategy, um, accounting, marketing, all the disciplines. And so when we redesigned the curriculum here, we said that entrepreneurship is going to be linked across all the disciplines. So it's not a department, it's an initiative where once again, we're linked, we're integrated with all the disciplines. And in that way, the exciting thing is that we can leverage the great faculty, the research, the courses that are already in the core of Kellogg and then build on top of it. So what we did is then taking all the interdisciplinary activities and curriculum that we already had, then we added a lot more of experiential learning classes. We've um, hired 20 plus adjunct faculty who are serial entrepreneurs, who are VCs and brought them in. We've reached out to our alumni to say, you're the best in your area, come and help us and mentor our students. And then we've built a lot of co-curricular activities that once again amplify the curricular activities. So this is a complete bundle that's built upon that rich foundation that was already existing at Kellogg and providing this once again very rich interdisciplinary experience. Yeah, I think what Linda's saying is spot on from my perspective as a student. I mean, 
having um, the ability to kind of view in the lens of a business that you're building and view the view in the lens of the classes you're actually going into with this business in mind um, and applying those kind of maybe frameworks or course concepts to like the business you're building was truly, truly valuable. And um, and then also you, Linda talked about like kind of bringing in these like well-known entrepreneurs, innovators, successful CEOs to come teach and adjunct some of these classes. I mean, absolutely spot on there too. I mean, I, I mean, what better to have your, not only like your professor be like a lead VC down here in Chicago that's connected with all the VC community that's sitting down with you one on one on a regular weekly basis mm -hmm. telling you kind of where are some opportunities you need to kind of de-risk or where areas do you need to kind of prove validation to how can you kind of frame your story and your pitch to potential investors and I just think that that tandem of kind of having the, the course concepts frameworks coupled with that like real world experience that some of these professors bring in it's just it's truly unmatched in, um, in, in my opinion, across the business school community. Yeah, no, I, thanks, Chase, this is right on. So one of the things we do want you to leave with if you come to Kellogg is we want you to graduate with the entrepreneurial mindset. That is foremost um, in, in, our, in our world. We, and you know, what do I mean by entrepreneurial mindset? Yes, you can do one or two courses on design thinking, prototyping, customer discovery, product market fit, absolutely. But I think the critical thing is that you are continually applying those processes in new challenges, new businesses. We want that entrepreneurial mindset to become second nature to you so that when you leave, you will never take a situation in, in a business setting again for granted. You will always be asking questions. You'll know what questions to ask. And you'll also be looking for those challenges and opportunities to really create significant impact on businesses and people yeah. in the future. Yeah, and I mean, like, and probably most of you, I would think at least like similar to me, um, you know, you take the last three to five years of whatever job you got after undergrad, and maybe you didn't want to like strive for that entrepreneurial passion. You might have like always kind of had burning inside you since you were a kid, or maybe something that your parents wanted you to do later in life, or maybe it was one of like your long-term ambitions to do something like that. And I think, I mean, this time now that you had a couple of years in the in the real world, and now you're contemplating coming to business school, I just think it's like a perfect opportunity to kind of like rehash some of those skills. Uh, re kind of calibrate your mindset to maybe get rid of some of that, you know, some of those um, bureauc you know, bureaucratic <laughs> rules you learn in from like the corporate world or whatnot and kind of leave those behind you and kind of embrace something that's new and different or maybe even reinvigorate um, that kind of entrepreneurial gene you had kind of in you since, uh, since you know, you were younger. So it's definitely, definitely spot on. And this, talking about that entrepreneurial gene, I think what's kind of the other interesting thing about Kellogg is when you, when you look at this entrepreneurial mindset, it's in high demand across all businesses in every part of the life cycle. So at Kellogg, we truly believe that there's multiple career paths to entrepreneurship. It's not just about launching new ventures. And that's what excites me most. So when students come in, we, we kind of bucket the career paths in, in these three areas, launchers, builders, and corporate innovators. And I think it gives students kind of a sigh of relief that if they aren't coming in with this compelling idea, I mean, you came in with a compelling idea, but there's a lot of students who don't, but they want to be in that entrepreneurial environment. Once again, there's a number of choices that you have. So let me talk a little bit through kind of our three entrepreneurial personas. One is launchers. Chase right here is someone who came to business school to grow and launch their business. Some people come in, they've already launched one business already, and they're here to start another one. Chase came in, you knew what you wanted to do, and this was going to be the place that you could build it. Other people know they have an idea, they want to test it out, and they see if they really can launch a business by the end of school. So those are kind of the launchers. What excites me at Kellogg is the builders. Um, and I think there are a lot of students who come in who fit this profile. And one of the things is that a lot of students come in and let's be real, there's a lot of financial burdens with student loans and there's a great desire to go back to consulting or other their previous jobs and pay off their, their student debt. 
and then build something and get into starting an entrepreneurial career later on. The other thing is there's a lot of students who are going, I just don't want to be a founder. Um, I don't want to be in that messy world at the beginning when we try to figure out a business model and what's going to be sustainable and profitable. I'd rather go into a business that's kind of figured out that business model and help it scale. And that is, you know, once again, having a general business management background makes it absolutely perfect to jump in those jobs. So those type of jobs I also put into two buckets. One, we have a lot of students who want to go into venture-backed tech high-growth firms. Um, and I'll talk more about kind of the opportunities of getting into the, that, those career paths. But the other thing that's starting to grow, and it's very fascinating to me, is that there's a lot of lower middle market traditional businesses out there who are desperate to have new processes, new digital marketing, new technology, new thoughts, new innovation come into those companies. And we have private equity companies um, who are private equity firms who are looking to put students in C-level positions in these portfolio yeah. companies to drive change and, and create value. Um, and this is a whole area that's growing, um, and you know that area yeah. well. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I mentioned this earlier, my background's in healthcare private equity, and it was here in Chicago, and we did this with some of our portfolio companies where we'd hire kind of like young, hungry MBAs to come in and really yeah. add a lot of value to the corporate team and, and try to drive growth to the plan that we had underwritten as an investment. And we, un we ultimately found that someone, you know, younger and they're, you know, maybe right around the age of 30, young and hungry, oftentimes coming from a great business school like Kellogg, outperformed mm -hmm. an executive, you know, maybe 45, 50 years old that had kind of been running through a couple different portfolio companies. And so I think it's a really cool opportunity. It's something that's pretty new and yeah. emerging, honestly, at least like the process around it. And I know firms like my old one and I know other firms that are similar are starting to kind of penetrate the MBA market yeah. to kind of fill these portfolios. They're spots. coming to Kellogg and yeah. they're looking for these type of, of, of people. Mm -hmm. And finally, the third category is corporate innovators. And I cannot tell you the inbound calls we get from corporations all the time looking for students with this entrepreneurial mindset to come into corporations to once again rejuvenate them, um, provide new ideas, new products, new services, just because they're desperate now. It, you know, corporations are in the survival mode with all the technological disruption uh, okay. going on. So it's a fascinating area as well. So these are our three entrepreneurial personas. And at the beginning of school, um, we will get in a large, the, the auditorium, 300 plus students, and we'll lay out each of these. And it's amazing how students will go, oh, I didn't know there was this opportunity, and now I'm very excited. And literally every year, we have about a third and a third and a third going to each of these buckets. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say most of my peers from from my class, uh, both two wise and one wise, um, kind of gravitated w more towards kind of the builders and corporate innovator side. And if if you just look at this page, I think it's it's good. Like I didn't really think about it in this framework before Kellogg and having gone through the curriculum and n knowing what I know now. I think it makes a lot of sense. And it kind of it also resembles the risk profile too. So you know, if you move from the launchers over to the corporate innovation side, you can kind of see more risk over here, less risk over there. And yeah. so depending on what your you know your needs are after school and your and your in your personal situation. I can see how people can gravitate more towards kind of builders and corporate innovators for some stability, experience, and then maybe kind of learn the frameworks to pursue the launching path down the road later on. Yeah. So I know some of you have been to our website and maybe wondering how does this fit into all the various centers and other things that we have here. So this this slide helps to pull that together. So our launchers persona will tend to go into our new venture creation pathway. Uh, builders will go in growth and scaling and then corporate innovation. The Levy Institute is primarily focused on launchers and entrepreneurship. Um, the Heiser Center of VC and PE, it kind of bifurcates. It's a, you know, VC is more in the new venture creation, growth and scaling. We could say VC and PE there. 
Um, Guthrie Real Estate, you were very active in, in the real estate yeah. proportion. You were in the competitions. and mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think the real estate angles, it's unique. I think it, it's kind of its own asset class for one or its own kind of kind of carve out within finance, if you will. But it also has this whole um, and very actionable like entrepreneurship angle. And so it's just it's really neat how everything from family business can be tied into real estate to kind of corporate innovation. Yeah. And so it just it really just depends on what your desires are and whether it's a business you're working on or maybe a business you want to be working on. It just kind of these these this organization kind of helps you find your path within. I spent personally, I spent a lot of time both in real estate because there's a real estate piece to my business and then also on yeah. the family business side just because I might not be going in the family business now, but I have a family business that could potentially be worked and coupled with my business down the road. And so I, I wanted to learn um, just more about, again, like the frameworks and ways to think differently about how to best position a family business for like long-term succession planning and growth. And, and yeah, whatnot. and I do want to state that the Center for Family um, Enterprises here at Kellogg is huge. Um, we have students from around the world who are with uh, family businesses. I, I actually teach in the Miami campus and work with a lot of Latin American family businesses. And what's fascinating to me is as we get to the third and fourth generation, uh, we are seeing so many people um, spin out private equity firms, venture capital firms, um, becoming entrepreneurs in their own right. I mean, you're yeah. kind of going to be an entrepreneur within a family business. So there are a lot of opportunities in that. Um, and then the CRTI is the Center for Research and Technology and Innovation, and they focus a lot on corporate innovation. So I hope that gives you a little sense of how we connect all our centers with our core offerings here. Um, so let's move on. So as I said, one of the most important things that we've built over the last six years is an incredible faculty, many of them who have real world experience. And you know what they're doing in the classroom, Chase was talking about there, they're bringing their expertise and their networks into the classroom, as well as linking our students back out to the community so they can integrate into the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I think that's been a real plus for us. Mm -hmm. um, some of the faculty, just a couple of snapshots, because I know many of you want to know more about our faculty. Mohan Sani is a lot of, uh, does a lot of corporate innovation globally. He works around the world. Um, and so once again, he's bringing a lot of information from other world, um, rest of the world back into the classroom. He teaches a product management class, um, but he's always there to talk about corporate innovation. David Schoenthal has a very eclectic background. He was a healthcare VC. Um, he was a founder of Matter, uh, which is the healthcare tech startup in Chicago. He's now actually developed a class in health strategy where it is taught at Matter downtown. Um, in addition, he's built a number of the courses here and he's a lead in the business design practice at IDEO and director of Zell. Mm -hmm. Um, Carter Cast has both an entrepreneurial background as well in corporations. Uh, he's now a venture partner in the Pritzker Group Venture Group, and he's just written a book on mid-career derailers, which I find is fascinating and gives us all pause as we look at self-awareness. Karen O'Connor has been in investing in the Chicago and Illinois area for years. She was uh, the managing director of one of the largest angel groups in town. Um, she's been in private equity. She's now a venture partner at Ceres Venture. Um, and here, she runs the growth and scaling track. And I just came from a fabulous conference she's having with 100 plus alumni on, on looking how to, to grow talent and retain and acquire talent. It was lots of great things going on in the growth and scaling track. And the newest addition is Craig Wortman, who's building the Kellogg Sales Institute. Um, sales has often been um, almost a dirty word in, in the MBA curriculum. Um, right now, we realize that everyone, no matter what career you're in, you have to sell your vision. You have to sell your ideas um, to everyone and ev all the time. Mm -hmm. And this past quarter, uh, the highest bid course in all of Kellogg was entrepreneurial sales with Craig Wartman. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I fortunately, unfortunately, I wasn't able to take Craig's class, but I've interacted with him um, because my firm's involved with the Pritzker Group. Um, and a lot of the other people you see up on the screen, David, Schoen, David Schoenthal and Carter Cass, all are somewhat connected to Pritzker Group. And so those, uh, Pritzker Group has a nice tie into this school and this community. And so um, they're, again, they're living and breathing the stuff that they're teaching. Um, funny story about Craig Borman, or I guess sales and yeah. MBA. Um, so I, I had an interview with one of the head people at Poets and Quants, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with that website. Um, and his name is Jeff. Jeff said that the biggest thing that he has uncovered from uh, his interviews with MBA students is the lack of sales training that they get <laughs> when they're at school. And so the fact that I think Kellogg is like all ears to this and like really investing not only in Craig, but the whole curriculum around mm. um, kind of, you know, essentially we're speaking out saying we want more sales skills and sales training and essentially building a curriculum that's tailored to that need. Mm -hmm. I just think it's really, it's really impressive. And I think the, uh, one of the hardest things about starting up a company is kind of like I had to recalibrate from this like finance, very analytical mm -hmm. mindset to very like salesy, like whether you're selling yourself, you're selling yeah. your company, you're trying to get your first customer or client. Um, you need those fundamental skills and to like have a person like Craig, who's probably the best in the business yeah. at it, it's, it's, it's truly unmatched. Yeah, can't, uh, Craig is now um, teaching the top leadership at Google, actually, on how to yeah. sell. He's um, a machine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so those are just some of the faculty that you'll find here at Kellogg. So let's go dig a little deeper into some of the curricular opportunities, and let's start with launchers, the new venture opportunities. So the core of our new venture track is around the launch pad courses. And what I find a lot of schools will do new venture discovery. They'll do the, um, the design thinking courses, the ideation courses. And a lot of MBA schools will also do kind of the new venture launch. Um, I'm going to build a revenue model. I'm doing the investor pitch, et cetera. But what was really important when we designed the curriculum here is to put it into venture development, which is essentially test. There's not enough time put in by many entrepreneurs to really make sure that they have a, a, a valid product where someone's going to buy it. Um, and so new venture development is about 10 weeks of testing. Um, and I think this is a really critical, and, and you've been through that. Yeah, yeah so I, I would say probably out of my Kellogg experience, when I like look back, I kind of, I would probably say this is my fundamental coursework. I, I actually skipped New Venture Discovery and went straight into development just because where I was with my business when I got to school. Um, but I think to talk about New Venture Discovery just for a little bit, again, great introduction class. I call it like kind of getting your toes wet in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really nice introduction, great for the frameworks. Uh, you can start feeling and being entrepreneurial, but I think when you start taking it to development and definitely launch, the commitment and from time and, and what you're actually doing just becomes that much that much higher. And so I think when you get into these courses, it's much more serious businesses. There's funding provided uh, by the mm -hmm. school, non-dilutive, which makes it really helpful to mm -hmm. kind of do what you need to do to get your business to that next milestone, which entrepreneurship is all about. And like. The funny thing about new venture development, I love telling this story, it's because I remember my the professor who was the VC uh, in Chicago, his name's Troy Hennikoff. Um, not only did he found Techstars here in Chicago, but he runs a firm called Math Venture Partners. He was the professor of that class, and I remember him like sitting down and being like, Chase, what are the biggest risks or biggest assumptions you make to your business, and let's go test every single one of them over the next six to eight weeks. And one of these, one of these was, um, going out and interviewing and cold calling startup veterinarians to kind of learn about if, very, if veterinarians are starting up their business, uh, their own practice within the last couple of years, what challenges are they facing? Where do they see opportunity? Like where essentially can my business model fit into people that are, might be thinking mm -hmm. about this? And I ended up finding my business partner <laughs> through my cold call sheet of 100 different veterinarians across five different cities. And so it's just things like that where you might not like think about you like there's no way I was thinking about this when I was in your shoes about like cold calling veterinarians, but ultimately that's what I ended up doing, and it helped me find my business partner alongside other various tests I did to kind of get to that point when it came down to about a couple months before graduation, where I was like, am I going to go forward with this business, or am I not comfortable enough risk where I'm going to go out and recruit and get a different job? And so um, the development class was 
foundational for me. And, and New Venture Launch was really special too because I mean, talk about transitioning from saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm pressure testing, refining my business to saying, hey, I'm actually going out and launching this after school or during school. And I think everything from, I mean, what's not on this page, but I think it's, like, it's a lot of uh, pitch practice, pitch presentations. I mean, you had people, design consultants, you had um, speaking mm -hmm. consultants, you had uh, coaches, VC coaches, operational coaches to just help you like like know your pitch and and th I think that was what this course really taught me was how do you sell this to people that like believe in your business and what you need to ultimately accomplish with it and so I thought New Venture Launch was a great class and a good segue into getting into the real world of doing this full time. Yeah so so it's interesting in this path you know, going down these Launchpad courses is um, in in New Venture Discovery probably have about 300 students and a lot of them realize at that point, maybe I don't want to be a founder, but they'll go to corporate innovation or growth and scaling. Um, in new venture development, we probably have about 90 students who move into that. You, every team gets $1,000 for testing Facebook, Instagram, you know, ads, whatever you need. Um, and from there, I would say about 40% at the end of that class, put <laughs> yeah. their idea to bed, realizing that no one yeah. is actually buying it. <laughs> yeah. And then New Venture Launch, every team gets $5,000 um, to really start uh, covering those business expenses and fine tuning their business. Yeah, everything from legal to design work to, I mean, a, a lot to really help you get your business started. So. so in addition to those Launchpad courses, we also have um, what I, you know, for, for the lack of better words, building block courses, which you can pick and choose in determining what other skills that you want to build. Um, we've talked a lot about entrepreneurial selling there. Something else I want to point out is the introduction to software development, which has become a very popular class. A lot of you will work with technical teams, but you aren't engineers, you aren't programmers, you don't have a technical background. So this is a 10-week class where you can test out um, a little bit of C++ and HTML, um, dashboards, uh, SQL, all kinds of things. And so you, under, you, get, you develop technical literacy, which is very helpful when you're managing a technical team. Um, the other things I want to talk about is the industry focus and the experiential courses. The medical technology commercialization course and the commercializing innovation course are unique in that we look at intellectual property being developed at Northwestern in the medical, in, in the hospitals, in the physical uh, chemistry labs, and we bring that IP to class, and then we build cross-disciplinary teams from across Northwestern to commercialize that IP. So in the medical te technology commercialization course, you usually have M you know, doctor, MDs, uh, you've got legal students, you've got MBA students. Commercializing innovation, you've got postdocs, you've got engineers again, you've got legal, you've got business students. And some of our best businesses have come out of these commercialization courses, really some very deep technology that is really changing the lives of so many people. And finally, I also want to talk about the new venture courses. Most of these um, are run out of the engineering schools, but they are once again cross campus. And these are developed by um, industry. So there's new venture energy and transportation and impact and medical, and I'm sure I'm forgetting more web and um, old arts and entertainment. So lots of cho chances to work with other students across campus in building out great ideas. Yeah, I think um, on, on, this, on this page, what I think I would tell you to do as incoming students or potential students, to, to one, obviously you've heard me, a big fan of the Launchpad courses. If I were to circle a couple of these in, in box two, three, uh, in, in box two and three, launching and leading startups, I never took, but I heard yeah. really great things. So if you're, whether it's new venture discovery or it's launching and leading startups, it has enough of similarities that you can kind of get that introduction to, to startups and it's taught by phen uh, phenomenal professors. Um, on the industry focus, well actually first, on the on um, building blocks still, entrepreneurial tool, tools for digital marketing. Right. Again, I did not take this class, but heard awesome things about it. And if you think about like, 
what's going on in general with like retail and this whole e-commerce disruption, like the new rent is digital rent. And it's like what you're paying for ads and what companies are paying for ads. And so if you like, believe me, I'm like the farthest from a marketing guy. <laughs> and like, I felt like even for my business, which is medical and, and obviously there's consumer too to it. Um, I just felt like this was a big learning curve that I had to get up and just to be savvy enough to talk the mm -hmm. language with other awesome. people. And if you know what a landing page is and A-B testing, then maybe you're fine. But if you don't know what like SEO, SEM, A-B testing, landing page, you need to take something with digital marketing because this is like the future of rent, essentially. So definitely take something in and around digital marketing. And then on the industry focus, I got to say, like, triple circle real estate entrepreneurship. <laughs> and maybe this is just my like passion for real estate. I don't have any real estate background, but I knew that real estate was going to be involved in my future somehow. I knew it was going to be involved with my business mm -hmm. somehow. And so I kind of just, I took the real estate finance course, which, which was, it's not on this page, but this real estate entrepreneurship class by far was my favorite class at Kellogg, taught by a fantastic professor who's a practitioner, mm -hmm. an actual real estate yeah. entrepreneur out there investing, raised capital, uh, blew it out of the park with student housing. Now he created, he, I mean, his company now is called Novel Coworking, but it's essentially WeWork, but instead of them leasing out the space, they bought all the real estate going into it um, a few years back. And so he's absolutely killing it. And having like his frameworks, I mean, this guy was so open with you. He shared his operating agreements. He shared his NDAs, his LOIs. I mean, he gave you everything you needed to get a business up and running. He gave you his private placement memorandum. So Everything's in Word docs, so if you need to like re-edit things and wow. take something to market, I mean, you're totally equipped, and he's an open book um, kind of person. And then there's this huge real estate competition that, fortunately, like I think that's also probably why it makes me my favorite class. But our team won a hundred thousand dollar cash prize and or a hundred thousand dollar prize in a international real estate competition. And so um, it was a class that I just been like, hey, this seems interesting based on the syllabus, yeah. and it ended up like probably changing my life. Um, no, it has changed my life for sure. And so, um, Bill, the professor, Bill Bennett, uh, big mentor to me today, mm -hmm. he, uh, part of the reward is free office space for a year and a half. And so I'm literally working out of one of his offices, <laughs> um, with my company right now as we're starting up. And it's just, it's just a really fantastic class. So if I were to like triple circle a class, it'd be that one. Awesome. So where's this lead? Um, we're talking a lot about launchers. These are some of the statistics. You can see that 75% of the students at Kellogg take at least one entrepreneurship class. And what's amazing is in the last five years, how many companies have been started and how much money has been raised. And I know you're going to add to that number really soon, but tight-lipped at this point. <laughs> um, so let's keep going. Let's talk about growth and scaling and the builders, because as I said, this to me is a great part of uh, the Kellogg entrepreneurship curriculum and going back to you know some of my original discussion about interdisciplinary you can see strategy operations marketing finance all the disciplines are here, here built um, for the growth um, and scaling pathway the unique thing here is that any of the cases in these courses are not large corporations they're privately held middle market businesses so you understand those issues in that scaling time. Um, the other thing we've just added is a growth and scaling practicum where students actually work with on specific challenges with local growth and scaling companies to understand the challenges not only in that specific challenge I should say but also managing this growth um, which can be very complicated. Yeah I took the growth and scaling uh uh, practicum class. It was it was fantastic. Um, Karen O'Connor mm. teaches it um, on site with a private family, huge family company, evaluating um, entering the drone market, and they were pivoting from like being a fire truck uh, <laughs> kind of military defense company into the drone uh, the drone segment. It's really interesting evaluating. So again, like ways for you to you know flex your consulting muscles if you have a consulting background or like the maybe private equity investing muscles you guys have from previous jobs, but also a way to kind of be introduced to saying, hey, if I were to go and be a, you know, lead a, a head of business development or chief, of, chief strategy officer at maybe kind of a growth and scaling stage company, like what does that role look and feel like on a day to day, not only from the client's perspective, but also like what the deliverables will be on your end. Super. So let's keep going. One of the things that we do offer for people in that growth and scaling pathway who really want to work in venture-backed companies um, or be in VC 
is that we have the opportunity to take about 30 students every year for the winter quarter out to San Francisco. We actually have uh, a facility right down the financial district of San Francisco. And students go out there and they work in a growth stage company or in VC for three days a week, Monday through Wednesday, and then they can take classes Thursday and Friday, and hopefully the weekends, well, I know they, they do a lot in terms of networking and, and going on various excursions around um, the area. So the courses that were offered out there um, is launching and leading startups with cases about uh, companies in the Valley. Um, we do a product management course with a person um, who, who is from Uber. Um, we also teach entrepreneurship, building innovation, teams, and culture. Um, and there was we also partner with the law school out there, so there's a couple of law school electives. Um, one this year around AI and a lot of the ethical issues around AI. So it's fascinating opportunities to learn out there. The work, we have amazing companies that our students are getting internships in, and the networking, the alumni are there, and they're, uh, we have a huge amount of alumni out in the Bay Area, and they're all very engaged in this program. So these are some of the companies um, that the students have worked in last year. Um, right now, we're getting set for the new group who will go out there in January. Um, corporate innovators. I really want to just, um, given our limited time, talk about one of the courses uh, that we offer. And in this case, we have a corporation who comes to the class and offers um, four or five different projects um, within their company that the students can ideate upon. But in addition to that, what the students do is like literally every single class moves to a different company and their innovation department in that company. And there they learn more about the issues of executing innovation within a large corporation. So it's both the ideation and the execution. And these are just some of the, the many companies that we work with in that course. So one of the things to highlight one more time is the, the number of experiential learning opportunities. We've talked about some that are in the key portfolio, but across the you know, um, Kellogg, there's all kinds of other experiential opportunities. And actually, one of the two courses in the key curriculum are experiential, So it's pretty amazing. Um, moving along, what I wanted to talk to now is some of the co-curricular opportunities. Now, we do a lot of same thing as many MBA schools. There's treks to the Valley. There's treks to New York. There's um, all a variety of things that are done across most MBA schools. But I do want to point out um, two that I think are quite different. One are the corporate mini labs. And this is, um, amplifies those courses in corporate innovation. So we have corporations come in and work with the students in kind of like mini hackathons. Um, on specific problems. So that can be an afternoon workshop where we'll have a corporation come in and say, here, we have this problem. The students immediately um, ideate and get feedback from the innovation team. Or it can be a two-week um, process where they'll get the, the, um, the challenge and then um, deliver to the innovation team two weeks later. All kinds of variations on a theme. Lots of treks around this to various companies. And this has become one, again, the highlight of many people who want to go into corporate innovation. And they're meeting and engaging with the innovation teams right on the spot. The other big one is the Zell Fellows Program. And I'm going to hand that to <laughs> Chase, because you were part of this program. So yeah. why don't you talk a little bit? Yeah, uh, so I, yeah, I was I was a Zell Fellow. Um, it's it's obviously run and sponsored by uh, Sam Zell. He's not running it in, you know, every day, but um, he he's actively involved. Um, if you if you associate any sort of uh, word with entrepreneurship at Kellogg, you have to throw Zell Fellows in there because I think it's really the the pinnacle of the founder mentality or that entrepreneurial mindset we're talking about. I know the, the coursework, the framework, the co-curriculars, but really I think Zell Fellows is is this on on steroids, honestly. Mm -hmm. And um and what I might mean by this is it's it really if you've heard of like YEO or YPO, 
Um, essentially, it's like a group of, of presidents or entrepreneurs in an organization that are all kind of going through the same problems and experiences of trying to lead, manage, and run a business day to day and grow. Um, it's kind of bringing that community together in Kellogg in a really well done, kind of well mastered um, fellowship that's sponsored by Sam Zell. And, and, you know, I think you do everything from going on an amazing spring break trip, all expenses paid to Israel to hang out with Sam and see the investments he's made over in Israel and also learn from the, the business startups and the communities that Sam's involved with and kind of sharing experiences from the international perspective. It's just something that I would have never probably ever done and having that was really neat. But then, so that, that's one side of the program. The other side is doing, um, like talk about like not being a marketing guy. I'm definitely not an actor at all. And we did like an improv workshop down at Second City with all of us. Um, we've done, we did trips up to Milwaukee um, for uh, Habitat for Humanity. And you just talk about, when I look back at my Kellogg experience and I think of like who are my closest friends outside of you know, my cohort, the people that I originally started with, um, you got, I, I can't say enough about the people that went through this program with me because you become so intimately familiar about their business, their motivations, their leadership mm -hmm. skills, uh, their vulnerabilities. It's, it's, it's just such a special, special group of people. And it's also um, endowed by a, a wonderful, magnificent guy who, who cares deeply about entrepreneurship and um, the, the leaders of kind of tomorrow and the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. And so he's heavily invested. And the school is heavily mm -hmm. invested. Um, we, we showed some professor, professors on the other page. David Schoenthal, uh, he runs the program. Um, he's fantastic, obviously connected incredibly well mm -hmm. with Kellogg, IDEO, Pritzker Group. So great guy to have kind of oversight of the program. But it's really the people that kind of make up the day to day. And, and Linda supports the program mm -hmm. a ton. Troy Hennikoff, the guy I mentioned earlier, is my professor. He's an advisor. Um, Greg Latterman, who I was in the new venture track, and I can explain the tracks a little bit more. Um, he was, uh, he, he kind of discovered, I think, um, like John Mayer there, or someone, yeah. like, someone, <laughs> like, someone like that, ridiculous. And he had like a, a music business and you know, made a ton of money doing it. And now he wants to give back. And so it's just really this great group of, of aspiring entrepreneurs. And it's really organized into these four tracks. So yes, you have to apply and it's pretty competitive and the spots are limited, mm -hmm. but it's organized by new venture. So if you're, it's kind of like the general bucket mm -hmm. of if you're starting a business, acquisition and ownership. So like the easiest way to think about that track is if you're trying to do like a search fund type of thing. So you're gonna go out and raise some capital um, or maybe self fund and go out and try to find a business to acquire and, and run. Um, healthcare, obviously, if you're starting sort of like healthcare mm -hmm. venture, it's a special track for you. And then emerging markets, which I, my business had really nothing to do with emerging markets, mm -hmm. but a lot of people, either with an international background or not, have definitely tremendous potential mm -hmm. in some emerging markets. So it's a special track designed for them. And while the tracks might seem separate on this page and in some of the programming, it's really that kind of class of call it 35, 40-ish yeah. people that are part of Zell Fellows that you get really, really super connected to. And it's people that I still talk to on a weekly, if not daily basis. And, and I think this is what Sam was really hoping for, is he's he's creating this alumni group. So every year, yeah. you everyone comes back together from previous cohorts to continue to connect and build the alumni group. In, in essence, it's a seven-month internal incubator. Every person gets yeah. $10,000. Um, to build out their business, um, which is always helpful, yeah. is there's lots of legal expensive right. and website designs and yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a very special program, and I think one of the, the premier programs that we can offer here at Kellogg. Um, I don't know if any of you have been to our global hub yet. It's a fascinating building. It certainly was built to increase collaboration. And I can tell from a personal experience, I write less emails because I'm meeting people all the time in the halls. Some of the fun spaces we have here, in the, and we have a lot of uh, great spaces here, is that we have an innovation lab. It's a co-working space, but we have speakers there. Um, we have Phil the Robot, where we can beam in people from anywhere in the world to talk to groups. Um, so lots going on there. We have a maker space where there's a maker bot going all the time. If they aren't making eyeglasses and Ks, they're doing something else. Um, and then we have an artist in residence room where we bring in people from around 
um, musicians, puppeteers, drama, graphics to show how you can be creative in other um, arts, which help us also be creative in our business um, ideas as well. Um, but we also um, have spaces outside. So we also offer all kinds of um, connections to um, downtown because um, there's a huge ecosystem down um, downtown. Let me just go through here. So 1871, as I mentioned, is the tech hub. Um, there's a room for Northwestern there where you can have meetings. It's a co-working space for alumni. Matter is the healthcare tech um, hub. Once again, we've got lots of connections there. We have classes down there. Students can go down there on a continual basis. Impact Engine is a social venture fund and students can intern with them. And there's a lot of activities as well with them. And then also, um, I forgot to say across campus, we have the garage. The garage is the hub, tech hub for all of Northwestern. So when we look at those launch pad courses, you know, if you're discovering your development, you can work in the innovation lab here. But if, once you get to launch and sell, we encourage students to work at the garage where they're integrating with engineers um, and other parts of Northwestern all in this co-working space. And there's residency programs, et cetera. The tech transfer office is involved, lots of integration with them. Um, I know you had legal law clinics with the Pr uh, Pritzker Law Center. We have um, um, some of the legal faculty come up and sit at Kellogg to help our students. Um, I've talked about um, the Farley Center for Entrepreneurship. They run the Newvention programs. So there's a lots that are going on across Northwestern all the time, which is, is exciting. Um, finally, funding. We talk a lot about funding for launching ventures. Um, we're big fans of non-dilutive <laughs> capital. Absolutely. And that's a lot about competitions. We have a cross-campus competition called Venture Cat. What's interesting about this competition, it runs in six tracks. There's a B2B, B2C, Impact, Energy, Food, Ag, food and bed, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Medical, so that the we pick semi-finalists and they get a month of mentoring, training, coaching from experts in the various tracks. They come together, there's a prize for each track winner as well as um, all the track winners go into the final bake-off and get a, get a larger prizes. That goes on, but there's so many other competitions that our students are involved in every single year. It's amazing the, how well we do every year in all kinds of these. So funding opportunities, we've talked about some of the um, funding you can get during school. During the summer, we have students who go work in entrepreneurial companies to see if they even like it or not. Uh, we place people in growth stage companies to see if they like that environment. We also have funding for people who have their own startups who want to take that summer to build their businesses. So there's opportunities in that space. And then for social impact, there's even more funding that can be um, a, um, uh, obtain on an ongoing basis. So even in the middle of school, if you have a project that you want funding on, you can um, make a proposal to get some funding uh, that will cover the venture impact um, pro programs. And then at the end, we have large awards that have really allowed social ventures to continue on after graduation and really build their businesses before they go out and, tr and get additional funding. Um, so I want to kind of wrap this up. There's a lot of information you've received. But I kind of this slide I like because it kind of shows how you go through Kellogg and the opportunities. So once again, as you come in, what we really want you to do is to expand your vision of what entrepreneurship is and that there's these multiple career paths that you can go down and that we really want you then to explore these and test these out. And you can do that with the curricular programs like the Launchpad courses or the Growth Strategy Practicum, as well as the co-curricular where you're going on treks, you're talking to people, um, you're getting all this experience. In the summer, 
we really want you to go out and if go try to be in an entrepreneurial company or a growth stage company, this is where you can get the real world experience and see what you really like and start building relationships that may lead to full-time jobs when you graduate. Second year is really going down deep, going very intensive around Zell Fellows, the competitions to really go deeper. Post-grad support is so important as well. And what's fascinating about uh, when we look at the continuous pipeline is it goes well beyond graduation. We continually want to engage with our alumni, bringing them back as speakers and, um, and mentors and judges. Chase is already brought back in the engagement pool. And at the very end, you will see this, this, this man at the end of the pipeline. That is Ben Jones, who is the faculty member for Key. And he's just done a lot of research that says, to be honest, that the research is showing that the average age for, the, for founders to start successful ventures is 42 years age, of age. So we want to be your partner, not only in school, but beyond that. So I hope this has given you a good idea of all the ways that Kellogg can contribute to your entrepreneurial career, whatever it is. And I think um, I think great summary thoughts. And I think just to add on really quickly, I think entrepreneurship as a whole takes a big leap of faith. You've heard that in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think the great part about Kellogg is that they show you there's multiple ways to take that leap of faith, and they make that leap like not so big. <laughs> it's a pretty like risk-free, insulated environment to take risk um, and and try try out new things. And I think that was my whole motivation for coming to business school and you know, kind of doing that whole kind of like cost benefit analysis of saying, well, do I really even need to go to business school to start my mm -hmm. company? And I'm, and looking back and having experienced what I've experienced, I'm glad I did. And so again, like multiple ways to take that leap and the leap isn't so big, so. Cool. Yeah. So um, we only have a few minutes, but we have a couple of questions left. Um, come on board, so those are? Yes, hi Linda, we have a few additional questions from students, one of them, an international student wrote in and asked, um, for an international student like myself that wishes to return to my home country after my MBA studies, how can the innovation and entrepreneurship yeah. program benefit people like me who wish to develop businesses in other countries? Yeah, I hope you heard that question, but you know, the whole idea of international students, there are 37% of our student population is from, um, other countries around the world. And we have a lot of international students who are coming here to, once again, learn those business basics of, of the business management degree, but they also can explore how similar companies work in the United States. So one of the students I worked with three, four years ago um, was named the most innovative company in Colombia last year. Um, and they have built a loyalty um, platform where they learned some things when they were in the United States, but they adapted those to the needs and the context in Colombia and have done phenomenally well. So we see a lot of this that's happened where people are going back to China and India um, all over the world with ideas and, and theoretical constructs that they've gotten here and then adapted and grown them in their own countries. So. Um, absolutely possible. Another student asked, I am very interested in learning more about professional coaching and mentoring opportunities at Kellogg related to entrepreneurship. Why don't you talk about yeah. coaching? Yeah, I, I, had a, I had a fantastic experience. Mine was more outside of kind of the core course framework, which, are, which I'll let Linda talk more about. Um, but rather, mine was with uh, or kind of through Zell Fellows, and so Brooke Vuka, Vukovic, Vukovic, Vukovic uh, was my leadership coach. Absolutely phenomenal lady, um, just so seasoned, uh, so um, so real and um, ability. So you're getting really a professional, a professional coach, coach. No, absolutely. personal. Oh yeah, like this this I mean this woman charges a ton for her <laughs> services out in the real world and. Uh, having her as kind of my career coach, if you will, uh, through Zell Fellows, but having mo essentially monthly sessions for, call it, seven months was pretty valuable. Pretty, pretty amazing. Um, and some business context came out of that, And we too. do have um, personal leadership um, courses also at Kellogg where small groups can get coaching, once again, it's like executive coaching sessions. So there's lots of opportunity. Mm -hmm. 
Um, with that, I think we're done. Yeah. Um, please reach out to us if you have any additional questions. Um, I hope you can see that Kellogg is a very special place, and we hope that you send in those applications, come to see us here, and good luck to all of you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, send me a note on LinkedIn if you ever want to connect. I'm happy to chat, and I love talking to current students or students about to come to Kellogg, and I'm happy to be a resource to you as you guys explore entrepreneurship at Kellogg. So thanks. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye bye.